Well, we're no Mike Miller and Mike Bush, two great Maryland uh, leaders, uh, but we are the voice of Maryland manufacturing. And we were also smart enough to schedule ourselves to be the last speaker <laughs> with, with, after all these amazing, amazing comments that were made today. This is what we do. We inspire people. We get beyond the, the window dressing and get to what really matters in life. And to those younger people today, for me, this has been an amazing opportunity to connect you with resources and ideas. And Tammy and the panel, wonderful, wonderful presentation. Uh, April Richardson, you know, we love you. Every time you're on stage, you just light up the hearts of people. It's just so amazing to be part. And manufacturing is family, and you felt that tonight. Lieutenant Governor Miller, beautiful comments. Thank you so much. Sue Wu, by the way, different generation, but I too graduated from Dundalk High School. <laughs> probably, before, probably before your parents were born. So Mike, let me ask you, what's your thoughts about what you heard today? So I agree with all of that, Mike, and, and really it's just inspiring, right? As, as a father of four daughters, to sit here and listen to the messaging of, of April and our panelists and Lieutenant Governor, um, I think the future is, is really bright for manufacturing in Maryland. Um, the future is strong, and now it's our job as, as an industry, as the industry partners and champions, to pick that up and, and carry that messaging forward. Uh, but before we recognize some special people, I think I'd like to take a minute and congratulate Mike and Stacy in their vision for putting this together. Um, look around this room. Thanks, Mike. And yes, Stacy, you are the queen bee. <laughs> Great job. Um, one of the things I want to mention, you know, a few years back, there was a book written. It was called uh, It Takes a Village by uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and who was also First Lady. And to the young students, if you didn't get a chance, to the students, if you didn't read that, it's what happened here today. This is a village of people, like-minded women, who care about being there for the younger women and to have the opportunity to be part of Maryland's future workforce. And that's an amazing network of friends to have. Uh, I am so hopeful that Maryland Manufacturing will enjoy the benefit, not only of the speakers that we had, but of those of you that are in the room today, of, of shaping our future manufacturing. Manufacturing is an instrument of social change. It helps people find good paying jobs with benefits. We make goods that are good for the world. So if you're interested in being part of that movement, we definitely saw today that there are many women role models in manufacturing who are inviting you to be a part of that. But it takes a village also means people outside of manufacturing. And at this time, we want to acknowledge three Maryland legislators who played a very important role as stakeholders in supporting our industry that will benefit all of you who, are, who will become part of manufacturing because they cared enough to make a difference in passing legislation that became law. And Mike, if you just want to talk about that for a second. Sure. And I think this all started, as Mike said, a, a few years ago. Um, Delegate Lily Shi. Uh, was kind enough to answer the phone when one of the mics called um, to explain the importance and the need for manufacturing. And what that turned into was the creation of a legislative working group to look at the manufacturing sector, to look at technology and how we can use technology in Maryland to be more competitive. And we're fortunate to have the support of, of these champions. And just last year, that turned into the Legislated Industry 4.0 grant program. And that wouldn't have been possible without Delegate Xi championing the cause. But most importantly, Speaker of the House Adrian Jones for picking up that, that cause and carrying that. And Delegate Atterbury, um, you know, and, and helping us get that out of your committee um, and being supportive. So we want to continue that support. We want to thank all of you for that support. And Mike's got something really special to uh, share. So, so at this time, we'd like to invite the three delegates, and, or the Speaker of the House and Delegate Chi and De Delegate Atterbury to please come up here. And one of the things that I am going to ask them to do, I want to ask each one of them to talk about what they felt today as part of this, uh, this, uh, this session. 
Uh, but before we, but as you come up, um, and we're a little cramped up here for room, but that's okay. We love each other. Again, we have, as was mentioned earlier, um, we have three women who are part of the mosaic to help Maryland manufacturing. So the women that are making a difference for Maryland do include manufacturers, but obviously they include uh, the elected officials and particu particularly Madam Speaker, who, who was, was acknowledged earlier, and the Lieutenant Governor, of course, as the first female speaker of color. Uh, I've gotten to know Adrian Jones, and, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that briefly, because after we're done, we're going to get a picture with all the students. But uh, at this point, I'd like to ask each one just to spend a minute just talking about what were their impressions today. If you want to talk about manufacturing, that's fine, but be happy to talk about women and what you heard today and what inspired you. So we'll start with Delia Gitschi. Well, good morning. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Mike and Mike, for your strong advocacy over so many years and your support of Maryland manufacturing. I am Delegate Lilici, and I'm so proud to join you and I'm thrilled to see the tremendous energy in this room today. Let's celebrate Maryland manufacturing. Now, um, I heard a lot of inspirational speeches this morning, and I just want to commend all the young women for choosing manufacturing as your career path. Because if the pandemic has taught us anything, and if, of course it taught us many things, right, from public health to public policy, but one thing we need to remember is that it taught us the importance of beefing up domestic supply chains. Because that is not only an economic and a public health imp imperative, but more importantly, it is also a national security imperative. So you have chosen a very strategically important industry and you will go far in your career. Our country and our state need you to elevate our competitiveness and you will be part of that important journey. And I have personally been privileged to be part play to have played a small part in this important journey by introducing legislation, but I couldn't have done it by myself. Personally, just to echo Lieutenant Governor's strong powerful message I'm an immigrant who grew up in communist China. I came to this country by myself with two ugly suitcases, and I had to learn English all over again. Um, but 30 years later, I became the first state legislator in America to have grown up in, in China. So if I can do it, you can do it. You have so many opportunities, and all of us celebrating you and championing you. The message I want to leave with you is what makes you different is what makes you valuable. I have been celebrated to my surprise so much as a legislator because of who I am, because I grew up in a different political system, because I'm an immigrant. I want America to win and I want Maryland to lead, which is my passion. And I commend you for all that you have done and I want to make sure that we continue to be strong partners to celebrate your success so that one day you can grow up to be April Richardson and Susie Gans. Thank you. <laughs> And so, so Delga Chi is the one that introduced legislation that we're talking about, but if you understand the process, it has to go through a committee. And the committee that it went through was headed up by Delegate Atterbury. So Delegate Atterbury, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, it is an honor to be here. I want to thank Mike for not just what he does for manufacturing and what RMI does, but for having all of you here because this is incredible to have all of you young ladies here and to have such a diverse group here. This is actually what I live for <laughs> in terms of being elected to public office because it is our responsibility as women to lift other young ladies up. Uh, I know that this is about engineering and I am not an engineer, I am a, an attorney um, because I could not become an engineer like our fantabulous uh, lieutenant governor here. Um, but what I 
encourage all of you to do who are already established in your career is what I do. Say, hey, come down to my office and shadow me for a day if you can get out of school. Come down if your parents can drive you down. Spend your spring break hanging out with us if you just want to see what it's like. Um, I represent District 13 in Howard County, Maryland, and I will do a shameless plug. We don't want you to stay in Maryland. Uh, Columbia, Maryland, part of uh, the district I represent, was named one of the top places to live multiple times in Money Magazine. So come join us in Howard County, please. Uh, thank you. Tammy, Tammy's from Howard County, Maryland. Um, and so I think that having all of you here and being exposed to this, we heard the, the wonderful panel say exposure, exposure. Exposure is the key, particularly for young women who we tend to be more timid when we're young. I remember being a young attorney and not being, uh, as having as strong as voice as I have today. Um, so please, continue to expose the young women um, um, to these types of opportunities. The last thing I, I would wanna say um, is there, there was a question uh, that referenced failure. And I don't believe in using the term failure. A failure is an opportunity. Uh, I too ran my first election in 2010 with the Lieutenant Governor ran for the House of Delegates. I did not win that. I did not win that election. Uh, I took the weekend to mourn the loss of that and then, you know what, at the time, and I still do, in my second job, I, I work for a government contracting uh, company, and my boss is my father, and he whispered in my ear, you lost the election, get up and come back to work. You shake it off, and you get up, and you get ready for your next opportunity. And all of you, by being here today, you're preparing yourself, because when you don't know when that opportunity is coming. You don't know. I had two kids in diapers in 2014 when an opportunity came for me to run again. And during that campaign, I found out I was pregnant with my third child, but I could not let that opportunity pass. So you have to be ready for all uh, opportunities that presented to you. I want to thank Delegate Chi. She was a champion for this legislation. She knows how to harass me to make sure that it came out of committee. Uh, and I want to personally thank uh, our Speaker of the House, who has been an incredible, an incredible mentor uh, to myself and, quite frankly, other young women coming through the General Assembly. So thank you all for being here. Speaker of the House, Speaker Jones. Madam Speaker, please show me. All right. I think I looked at, well, let me finish. This is what I do. I look through the whole audience, not to see whether you're awake or not, but um, just to see if you're paying attention. And I think that these two, these two young ladies, um, we couldn't have done this without the committee that it came out of and the sponsor. And so as, a, as legislators, as any of you um, talking specifically to the young people right now, have a desire to go into public service, um, I invite you, if you haven't been, to come to Annapolis. Oftentimes we do have um, groups that, are, that do come in. And, and you never know, I always say, you never know when circumstances presented itself. The Lieutenant Governor, uh, she, she cut her, she, well, she had other things she was doing, but she was, uh, <laughs> she, she was a member of the House of Delegates. We served on appropriations together. Who would have thought that she'd become a lieutenant governor and I'd become the Speaker of the House? And I'm saying that because you never know when circumstances present itself. And we had great communications with these two guys. And it's, it's not just about, um, yeah, we can, um, we're the ones that put the bills in and go to the committee and we get the you know, appropriate committee. But individuals who understand what we do makes a difference. And they'll, uh, they, they came before us prior to even the bill being thought and saying this is what we want to do. And it, makes, it does make a difference. That's what we like to, to see. And I'm inviting anybody who wants to come and, and see history right now. It's being um, <laughs> renovated a little bit, the state house. But um, uh, I look at the young people in your, in your communities. Um, they, they have, a, everyone has something that they're gifted in. And, you know, every single person. 
And so it's just a matter of finding that. And once you have that, that gift that you have inside and you use it to the, you know, the public good, that's, that is something that will make you feel good, but and also the fact that you'll be doing something good for others. And that was the reason why I got into public service, because I wanted to make a difference. Didn't know I was going to become speaker, but uh, you know, I do, do know that um, doing for others and listening to others is a very rewarding career. And I thank you for inviting all of us here, and thank you for coming because you can get invited, but a lot of times you may say, ah, no, I'm not going to come. But by the fact that you show up shows that this does make a difference to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that anybody's ever referred to the speaker as a warrior, but I'm going to say that because I know her history as a public servant and as someone who gave of her time at a time when women did not have the support that the women today have. And, you know, Madam Speaker, I know what you've done for the citizens of Baltimore County, citizens before you were Speaker, and I just want to applaud you for that. But at this time, I want to make a special, two special announcements. First of all, Mike Kelleher from Maryland MEP and, and myself, um, we, every year we celebrate champions of Maryland manufacturers. In 2024, we're going to do something different. Because what we realize, there's this constellation out there of manufacturing stakeholders, people from business, education, government, labor, and the community. And these are the people that are part of that village, okay? So I'd like to announce today that the first three inductees are bright stars in our constellation of energies for 2024 is Delegate Lily Sheed, Delegate Atterbury, and Speaker of the House, Adrian Jones. Hey, women power wins, okay? <laughs> women power wins. One last thing, and then I'm gonna to say to all the students, when I get done speaking, which will be soon, I do, I do like public speaking. That, that's the that's point, baby. Uh, we want all the students to come up front and to come up on stage, because we're gonna get a group picture with all the elected officials. But we just finished Thanksgiving, which was a period of time when we thank others for the things that are good in our life. And we're entering now into a period, uh, a season of giving. And last year I had the opportunity to attend an event that was hosted in the 10th Legislative District that, um, that was a toy drive and canned food drive for r residents of that district. And it's, and it's being led by Delegate uh, Adrian Jones, Speaker Jones. So at this time, Mike, you wanna join me please? Mike and I wanna announce to the speaker that we're gonna be contributing to your event this year to help people in your district. And I was there last year, and it's a beautiful thing to see these young kids get, get toys and families get gift cards that allows them to buy food. Um, and I also wanna encourage, so she dresses up like Santa's little helper. So you might want, there's a flyer on the table, so you need to go there, cause she's smiling the whole night. She doesn't have the burdens that she does in Annapolis. So, uh, Madam Speaker, we are so happy to be able to support what you do, what you continue to do, grassroots for the people in your district and in Maryland. So, congratulations again for everything that you do. Yeah, thank you.